Okay, let's cover our first basic example of broken authentication. And for this, we're going to start off with Try Hack Me platform. So make sure everything is started, you have your burp suit, you have your VPN running, and make sure that you also get the IP address for the VPN. Once you do all of that, navigate to the Try Hack Me platform and go, as usual, to our web hacking fundamentals and navigate to our OWASP top 10 room. Here it is, let's go right here. And we already know right here we got a bunch of different tasks, but for this lecture we want to navigate to task number 6 and task number 7. Now, if you want to read about broken authentication a little bit, you can read through the task number 6 and then navigate to the practical part, which is task number 7. And this task is rather easy. So let's take a look and let's read what it asks from us. But before we read through this task, let's start our machine, because we already know that it takes about a minute or two in order for it to start properly. While it's starting, let's read through this task. For this example, we'll be looking at a logic flaw within the authentication mechanism. A lot of times what happens is that developers forget to sanitize the input given by the user in the code of their application, which can make them vulnerable to the attacks like SQL injection. Okay, we already knew that. Let's go all the way down. Let's understand this type with the help of an example. Say there is an existing user with the name admin. Okay. And now we want to get access to their account. So what we can do is try to re-register that username, but with slight modification. We're going to enter space and then admin. Notice the space in the starting. Okay. Now when you enter that in the username field and enter other required information like email ID or password and submit that data, it will actually register a new user, but that user will have the same right as normal admin. Hmm. That seems to be quite a big of a problem. Let's continue reading. That new user will also be able to see all the content presented under the user admin. To see this in action, go to this link. So let's visit it straight away. And let's go down just to read until the end and try to register a user named Darren. You'll see that user already exists. So then try to register a user space Darren. And you'll see that you are now logged in and will be able to see the content present only in Darren's account, which in our case is the flag that you need to retrieve. Hmm, interesting. And the first question is, what is the flag that you found in Darren's account? So let's go and take a look. If we try to log in as Darren by typing Darren and let's say test1234 and click on sign in, we get an error, invalid username or password. So let's try to do what the try hack me example told us to do, which is to register a user with slight modification. So let's type space and then Darren. Make sure there is space right here, otherwise it will not work. And under the email, we can type any email that we want. I typed test at gmail.com, which is probably a non-existent email. And under the password, I will type test1234. And I will register this user. Okay, so we registered the user successfully. Now let's try to log in as that user and see whether we will be able to find the flag that should only be accessible from Darren's real account. So let's go right here, type space and then Darren and test one, two, three, four. Let's click on sign in and here is the flag. So we successfully performed a broken authentication attack where we registered a new user with slight modifications such as adding space at the beginning of the name and it allowed us to see the flag that should only be accessible from the real Darren user. And we would submit this flag right here under this question. Okay, and the other question is try to do the same trick and see if you can log in as Arthur. So I assume the Arthur account already exists, so pretty much we can do the same thing. We can go register, add space, and then Arthur. And for the email, we can type once again anything that we want. 
I typed test2 at gmail.com and password will be test12345, just to make it different than the Darren's account. Now let's go and log in, so add space, Arthur, and test12345. Click on sign in, and here we get the Arthur's flag as well. So we pretty much performed the same thing for two different accounts, for Darren's account and for Arthur's account. And if this type of vulnerability was to exist in a real page, we would pretty much be able to access any account on that page just by knowing its username. We would then perform a slight modification, register a new username, and we will be able to see all the things that original user can see. Okay, but this was a rather simple example of broken authentication. In the next video, we're going to go back to our OWASP BWA and try to take a look at a different broken authentication attack. See you in the next lecture.